Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the new banner that just dropped. It dropped in association with part two of the summer event, a fireworks nocturne Midsummer Night's Dream, which I just want to take a moment to say I love this graphic right here. And honestly, I wish that there was a wallpaper that was basically this. Um, if you can't tell from some of my previous thumbnails, I really like neon, especially neon lettering and the fireworks. I'm just very happy with that. I like the boss that's in it as well. I think all of that is very cool. It's very immersive for me uh, as far as playing the game. It kind of gets me excited to play the event. I guess the only uh, downside I would say is associated with the banner. Uh, I'm not super impressed with the wallpapers. And I think Aerith's especially could have been, I think it would have been better to have a nighttime scene, uh, maybe with some of the fireworks going off in the background. I was really hoping for that. But with all that said, uh, let's go ahead and just break down this banner. So I'm going to start off with looking at the costumes because they're both very similar or if not nearly identical and they're pretty easy to discuss. So. Here we have Magic Ward and Magic Ability Mastery. Now, previous to this banner, I think the only, the, to my knowledge, the only person that has Magic Ability Mastery is Sephiroth. And he got that on his Limit Break costume that was during the six month anniversary. So pretty standard, it's Mastery, so it's only 15%. However, I, it's pretty good. I can say though, the only problem is I don't find myself using Sephiroth's. I, I love the fit, so I I wait, I use it for a skin, but I don't find myself using it a whole lot for this um, R ability. Not that it's not appropriate in certain situations, but I've found generally that magic non-elemental um, attacks haven't been as useful as physical non-elemental attacks. There just isn't as, as much content, I feel. Uh, so typically when I'm running magic teams, I'm usually running them with an elemental damage for elemental weaknesses. Um, take that for whatever you want. Now magic ward, that is a brand new R ability. It is the opposite of sun's favor or whatever that was called that we recently got. So HP plus 5%, which is standard. And then this time it's, it's magic defense plus 15% instead of physical defense plus 15%. So if you remember the fire Arcanum that Tifa just got, that was one that had the physical version of this. As far as this outfit on Aerith, I don't find it that useful. I'm not saying that some of you won't, but so far I have yet to be able to really build Aerith to be a damage dealer. It can happen and I'll show a card uh, that Tom Rom made that shows kind of a build you could put together with this new stuff for ice. And, or at least her new weapon. Uh, but the magic ward, I don't think at the moment is, is extremely useful on her because it's very easy. If you put her in a healing role, the way that I run her almost exclusively or healing and utility or whatever, uh, magic defense is pretty easy for me to get up on Aerith because a lot of the healing weapons have a, you know, our ability that's magic defense. So getting an extra 15% is obviously going to be huge but I don't find it that necessary on her because I don't really have problems getting her magic defense up high while, you know, already working on the stuff that I wanted to do. So I'm not having to really pick, um, let's say, sub weapons based on magic defense that don't also have another R ability like heal potency that I want. So for me, I would not be going for this. If I was going to go for one costume on this banner, it would be Vincent's. Um, and as far as it looks, I like it. I know some people don't. I don't think it's super imaginative, but it is kind of summary. Vincent's, however, I think looks sick. Um, honestly, like, just super stylish. I don't know. I, I think I think this is an awesome outfit. So far, I think most of Vincent's are very cool. He's kind of a character, though, that just kind of drips swag, you know, so to speak. So. I think it's pretty easy uh, for them to just make really creative outfits for him. As far as what it does, uh, it's called Formal Attire. It's got the same stuff that, that Aerith has. Uh, Magic Ward, which I do think, again, is probably more useful on Vincent for survivability purposes than it is on Aerith 
because more of the stuff you're likely to equip on him is not going to have magic defense as an R ability. As far as magic ability mastery, I also think that this works better on Vincent. So far, he's got a lot of good uh, magic abilities in his kit, and I think that people want to use him as a damage dealer, which is why I originally picked up the magic ability mastery on Sephiroth. Again, more of your main DPS role, or at least he's going to fill that role more often than not. So if I was only going to go for one of these two, it would definitely be Vincent's because I just, I don't see as much use for it on Aerith personally, or I don't think it's as easy to flex her into that role. But based on your own account, you can make that decision for yourself. Now, as far as the weapons, I don't even know how to pronounce this exactly. I would guess it's Hugin and Munin, Munin, something along those lines, but I could be butchering that. So what does it do? Um, basically, you're looking at the magic non-elemental damage of what we've seen previously with the physical weapons. So it maxes out at 1300% at OB6. You're looking at 1140%. And then I will show you on this card. This is what it looks like at OB1. So you do get a huge benefit, in my opinion, from going from OB0 to OB1, getting that extra 130% magic non-elemental damage. Um, other than that, he doesn't get much of a boost to the magic attack. He doesn't get much boost to magic ability potency, but you do get a boost on both of those. So if, you know, I was trying to pick this up to use immediately, it's it's worth trying to get it to OB1, in my opinion. However, these can both be wishlisted later, so it's not the end of the world if you don't even get a single copy. Um, as far as support materia, it's got the ice boost on it, which is cool. Um, it reminds me of guide gloves for Tifa, which was limited, so that makes this a little bit easier to get, and for some people, a better choice because of the fact that it's easier to eventually get it to OB6 or OB10. If you remember, Tifa's had fire in this slot. This one's got ice. It's got a sigil boost. Uh, everything in the support material is spectacular, in my opinion. Here, this is a big difference between Guide Gloves. Guide Gloves has lower, <clears throat> lower top end physical attack, but much higher physical ability potency. And I think when you're equipping a weapon like this, the, f the ability potency is the more important R ability. It's not that hard to max magic attack, but considerably harder to max magic ability potency. So I, I do think these could be, you know, if these were kind of reversed, which one had, you know, higher stats, obviously that would make it better. However, the trade-off being that Tifa's was a limited time weapon, and I can tell you personally, it was very difficult for me to eventually get it to OB6, and I doubt that I will ever get her guide gloves to OB10. So the trade-off I think is fine. I don't have a problem with it. One thing to note though too, if you main hand this, you will max magic attack at OB10, uh, but it's overkill at the moment. Unless they add more levels, you don't actually need 62 points. However, that does make it considerably better as a sub weapon because again, sorry, opening this back up, uh, you'll get, you know, 31 points out of it, which would put you very close to level five. For that reason, it could be useful there. However, I still want the magic ability potency to be higher. That's just me. I do think though, this is a very good weapon for him uh, because the only other like really strong magic non-elemental damage weapon that really comes to mind is Sephiroth's with that, uh, again, his anniversary limit break sword. However, that sword does less damage. Um, yeah, I think it caps at 900 and it does, but it's all enemies, but it does times 1.3 if you're on a single enemy, which only comes out to 1170% at OB10. So uh, this definitely does more damage. Like I said, it is on par with guide gloves in the percentage based on the C ability. So I think this is a big pickup. I It's something that I think if you're going to want to main Vincent a lot, you would definitely want to get this. However, you know, it is just featured banner, so it's not like you have to get it right now. Going over to Aerith's weapon, Citric Wand, this one I think has a lot of use, or at least it will have more use in the future. Uh, right now, same thing with ice damage. Um, I can only... I've, obviously, there's been so many weapons that have been coming out that it's hard to keep track of, but 
Sephiroth is who really comes to mind when I think of ice magical damage. Uh, I think of maybe Tifa or somebody else when it comes to physical, but this weapon is specifically, or Aerith. <laughs> Aerith also does have an ice kit now. And, you know, this is really geared towards using magic because it's got this second part to the C ability, which boosts magic. Now, one thing that's interesting to note is that it starts out at mid and mid, which is very strong for just a five star weapon. And increasing ice damage, that's obviously going to be good. Increasing magic attack at the same time, also very good. And here, when we get to OB6, you can see this starts out as high. This one never starts out as high. The difference is that it can stack to high, but only, I think, once you hit OB6. I will show this here again. Amram made this infographic and it shows kind of, you know, what this weapon would look like from OB0 to OB1. I don't think you're getting a whole lot out of that. So really, OB6 is kind of the next big step. I mean, you get some stats, of course, but as far as the C ability, which is what I'm usually focused on from five star to OB1, uh, there's, there's no significant gain there. So uh, what do we have ultimately though is, you know, magic attack, buff debuff extension, which obviously I'm really into, especially with weapons like this, because you want those buffs to last, especially if you're also using that character to heal. It's got ice attack boost, which is very nice. Circle sigil, very nice. Uh, I think this is a great weapon. I, you know, the fact that it, like I said, for me and my teams, it would only be useful for using it on Sephiroth. However, the fact that you're getting a magic attack increase with the ice damage increase for three ATB makes this extremely strong. And I think would be something I would definitely want for ice teams. However, because I can wishlist this later and because the anniversary, the one year, the big one is right around the corner, this is not a pull for me. I think the only reason you pull on this banner whatsoever is to try to probably get a copy of Vincent's garb for the magic ability mastery. Do I think that it's a must? It's hard for me to say because Vincent's not gonna be a main staple in my groups unless I absolutely have to for quite a while. He's brand new. I didn't really use resources to pull for him actually at all. So uh, for me, this is an easy skip. You know, I don't really have a whole lot to say about that. I just, it doesn't, it's not going to boost my account in a significant way to get either one of these. At the end of the day, while 15% is great, I think it's gonna be way more noticeable for whales because they're trying to eke out, you know, the very highest tiers of, of damage and everything else. I don't know that there's gonna be a huge difference with 15 more percent on that mastery. So for me, I, I'm okay with skipping this completely with the intention to certainly wishlist Aerith's weapon uh, on future banner pulls. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you, again, this infographic that Tom Rom made is <clears throat> basically an outfit combination review is what he called it. And we're looking here at Aerith and specifically he's showing if you put a few of her, you know, main ice weapons and ice garbs together, this is kind of what you would have. So um, starting out in the top right hand corner, this shows what is on the main hand to offhand and outfit. This is using her ice mastery outfit that came from the fall or winter of 2023. It was called Fairy of Snowfall. That gives ice mastery plus 10, which is 20% to your ice damage. Not super concerned with the other R ability, but I think that's the HP. In the main hand, he's got Snowflake, which was the weapon that she got. And you can see on the left under C abilities, that does the snow spell, 540% magical ice damage for 4 ATB and magic defense down, which really, really does combine well with this new weapon. So she's he's got here, uh, Citric Wand in the offhand for that ice damage up, the magic attack up. And if you combine those two things, you do have a really strong uh, unit because you essentially have everything you need to do ice magic damage. You have ice potency up, you have magic defense down, magic attack up. I mean, that is gonna be one hell of a combo. And what I really, really like about this weapon is the fact that it doesn't have to be cast on herself. It's single ally is the range, not self. So that enables her to not only use it for herself, but she could use it for Sephiroth. And I think that's where this weapon really, really shines because it allows you to basically play more than one role with it. Um, and here, this is an example of the R abilities that are gained 
just from using this combination of weapons with no sub weapons. We can see a boosted magic attack that is maxed. Uh, we can see ice potency at level five, which is not bad. And buff debuff extension level four, again, not bad. So pretty strong combination here. And I do think this is gonna be something that people are gonna wanna have moving forward, especially if you have that uh, Fairy of Snowfall for that Ice Mastery. I did not get that. So not something that I can build with that component. I'm looking at her more of a straight utility and not as my main DPS unit. But, uh, you know, you'll have to just, again, look at your own account and kind of make that decision for yourself. That's about everything I have for this banner. I would really be interested to know if anybody's going to pull on it. I know there has been, I mean, we can see here four banners that are currently featured. And I think that is as many as we've ever had. I'm coming all the way back to that fire one that I showed with Tifa. I pulled on this. I skipped this. I pulled again on this one and I will be skipping this one. You can see I'm back up to 11.4K. I'm hoping to get to at least 30,000 uh, before the anniversary comes and that is getting closer and closer. So subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.